Welcome back to Book Club Preview, and today we're looking at The Death in the Clouds, chapter 17 and 18. And this chapter, uh, these two chapters are not that long, and it starts off with Hercule Poirot going to uh, Wandsworth, which is where uh, Henry is. Henry is the lead um, steward on the airplane. So he's not one of the people sitting, sitting at the seats, he's going back and forth um, helping people. And Hercule asks him questions, they kind of talk for a while, and then he asks him, you know, when you were getting Madame Giselle's stuff, was anything disarranged? Was there anything messed up or extra or out of place? And Henry couldn't think of anything, but he says, maybe Davis knows something. Because uh, for Henry, this whole situation has been really bad for him. Um, it's really affected his family and he's stressed. But for Davis, he's been pretty excited. Davis is young, uh, he's not married, but he is seeing some girl. And uh, Hercule goes and sees Davis and he says, uh, Mr. Davis, did you notice anything disarranged at uh, Madame Giselle's area? He says, no, 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 I, I don't remember anything. Is there anything extra or missing? He says, well, yeah, um, Madame Giselle had two spoons. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes we bring an extra knife on accident or extra spoons or something. Like it, it happens occasionally on a busy flight. Maybe that was just something that happened too. So Hercule Poirot is looking for something. And for some reason, there are two spoons in Madame Giselle's table when there only should have been one for her coffee. And then uh, Hercule Poirot asks uh, Davis, Oh, Davis, how do you think about those French ladies? And David says, oh, I think the English ladies are enough for me. And then Hercule winks at the bartender behind the bar, because I think this is the girl that's actually dating uh, Davis. So I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but sounds like Hercule maybe is helping uh, move things in the right love direction. Chapter 18 is uh, in Victoria Street, and this is with Daniel Clancy. Oh, no, James Ryder. Daniel Clancy is the author. James Ryder is uh, someone else, okay? Now, as Hercule is um, talking to James Ryder, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe it is James Ryder, because Daniel Clancy wrote the book, okay. And as he's talking, um, James gets a little frustrated. Um, he gets a little uh, angry and upset as he's talking. And he said, there's been some bad things about the situation. There's been some good things. And Hercule says, oh yeah, it's too bad. You couldn't get the loan. And uh, Mr. Ryder's like, what? How did you know about the loan? It's like, oh yes, um, I have my ways. It's too bad you didn't get that little loan. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's just a little bit of money that can really help me out, but I couldn't get it. And now I'm having a lot of problems. But because of this death, a lot of people want to interview me and I'm making some money to kind of help me out right now. And Hercule says, oh, um, you didn't ask Madame Giselle for any money. And he says, no, I would never do that. Because really, I have sources that say something different. It's like, never, 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 never. And Hercule says, oh, sorry, sorry, I must have been wrong. That's okay. And then he asks some, some other questions. And Mr. Ryder makes some kind of error and he calls Dr. Brandt, Dr. Hubbard. And he's like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, why did you call Dr. Brandt, uh, Dr. Hubbard? And he said, I don't know. My mind is kind of um, crazy today. Maybe it's because Dr. Brandt had the flute and the flute reminded me of old lady Hubbard. You know, I guess there's some nursery rhyme or something. And Hercule's like, hmm interesting and that's kind of how the chapter ends vocabulary absolve absolve means to erase forgive forget over conscientious is thinking too much thinking about it uh, over is too much okay conscientious is thinking your awake mind he then is an unbeliever so if i'm a christian and you're not a christian you're a heathen if I'm a Muslim and you're not a Muslim, you are a heathen. Okay, if I am a Hindu, you're not a Hindu, you're a heathen. If I'm British, okay, and I have these British values and principles, 
and you don't have them, <laughs> you're a heathen. So uh, the wife of um, Henry calls, uh, I think, foreigners heathens, <laughs> which Hercule Poirot is a foreigner. Um, abolishes. I didn't know this word. I had to look it up. It has a capital B in the book. So I don't know if it's referring to a certain group of people. But as I looked it up, it's like that teenage rebellion. Okay, you actively want to argue or disagree or fight against or be combative, right? Rebelling. You, you want to make an argument or fight. Um, usually for like teenagers. Jaunty is cheerful and happy. Insinuated means imply. Um, you don't know who ate the last cookie, do you? Okay, this is kind of like implying that you did it or insinuate is even a step further is like you ate the last cookie didn't you right and then you're like what no i didn't okay so it's it's not super direct but it is very close to implied you're hinting strongly that uh something is the situation or the truth highfalutin is another uh, slang word which just means lofty um, uppity, um, higher you know, high person. Infantismal is tiny. And Mr. Ryder says infantismal amount, a tiny amount of money. That leaves us with our discussion question, which is if you, no, not if you, why <laughs> would it be important or why could it be important that Madame Giselle had two spoons. Hercule Poirot seems to think that is kind of odd and interesting. Two spoons. Hmm. What, what would that hint at or what would that mean? And of course, please make your own discussion question. That is all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.